Wow. You feeling better? Hey, who's on cough syrup and pain pills too? <laughs> <laughs> you get more pep out of those. Yeah, man. I am I am what the kids call a uh, crossfaded. Oh, nice. Uh, but old man version. Uh <laughs> Because yeah. I got a muscle relaxant for this guy here. Oh, right. And then a cough medicine. Right. You're and on the, the senior speedball. That's right. <laughs> the senior speedball, which is, um, hold on a minute. Let's try this for a second. What do you think about that? There we go. Hey. I like that. I like that. I may switch it up again. I get all my glasses. I was like, I think I'm going to try switching up the glasses this episode <laughs> because when I'm on cough syrup, I get great ideas. <laughs> That's entertainment, baby. <laughs> is this episode 93? Um, That is a wonderful guess. It is 92. Oh, feels like 93. Yeah. Oh, and this is how fuzzed I am. I did the, Hey, that, I was pretty sure I'd done all the things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey that's all you need is the hey so we're done right that's it stop Have recording a good. good night Week. <laughs> yes alex and jim analyze billy joel lyrics 92 92 and you picked where, where were you in 92 where was i in 92 in 92 i was i thought about this with the unfortunate passing of matthew perry this is what oh. i thought of I thought that when, so Matthew Perry uh, passed away and I had nothing but empathetic, sad, decent human thoughts towards him. Sure. And I saw some comic online post something stupid and not a good comic, by the way, just not, uh -huh. and not a good joke. I just mean, mean. Hmm unnecessarily mean to people who first of all to him he he's a person and he died and also to people who loved him they are people too sure but then you remind me in 92 in 92 i would have been the shit bag who made some inappropriate joke that's what i would have been yeah because i was in my angry phase and i was and so i didn't participate at all all i thought was well, he's going to feel bad in five years. So that's something you have to live with, sir. Yep. May not even take that long. No, he may. Yeah. And in a worse environment, because you don't know what I said. It was in the 90s. There's no record of it. Right. And I, a, these kids today. Yeah. They don't understand what a different planet it was. Dude. Yes. We, we were operating. We were like black ops. We Nobody were knew what anybody was doing. Yes, I, for the record, they have it harder. Oh, bye. Yes. Oh Definitely. my lord, we were lucky. Basically, walking around naked all the time, dude. We would go to a party where a million horrible things happened, and there were no photographs. No photographs. Much, much none taken. Much less posted anywhere. Yeah. It and just where... happened, and then it went away, and then you relied on uh, stories. And where would you have posted it? On a, outside on a, a, a telephone pole? <laughs> yeah, that's the way you staple it to a telephone pole. <laughs> look, what, look what Alex did. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how he got people to go to your improv shows back then. Gee, many Christmas. Yeah, and this dipshit making his joke about a man who passed away enjoy that forever hey and in five years if you're a good comic and you're auditioning for an important thing yeah with uh maybe someone who used to work with uh, matthew perry <laughs> yeah really him. yeah so that dude fucked up but also it's a minefield for people who accidentally fuck up yeah like, what if you made uh, a podcast about Billy Joel lyrics <laughs> <laughs> on cough syrup? Oh, yeah. Let's see what they happens. Get a job five years from now. Well, I'll tell you what. For some reason on cough syrup, I'm a sweeter, even sweeter man. 
I won't say anything terrible. If did it on uh, tequila. Oh, yeah. Forget it. You're mad at me for a month. You are. Yeah, me. And you're well, patient. You're patient. I think I've been mad at you for a month because of tequila. Oh, I'm guaranteed. You hit me once when I was on tequila. <laughs> and and hard and uh, uh, des deservedly so. Uh, uh, yeah. Great. There was never a point when I thought, do that. I never thought that. <laughs> yeah, it's more like, uh, what took so long? Yeah, what took so long? And what's wrong with the rest of you who didn't? <laughs> Why did uh, Alex uh, have to settle things? <laughs> it was never my role. No, but you did it. Sometimes, sometimes a hero rises. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heroes are made by the circumstances, and you rose up. You were you were there when it needed to happen. Uh, that makes one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to oh. ask you this question. Then we'll get what song did you pick? Do you remember? I think it was Rosalinda's Eyes. That's right. And you could easily listen to the wrong song if you're not careful. It's true. There's exactly one song that's ridiculously similarly named. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. And, and, and why aren't there 10 more? <laughs> Just if, every manifestation. If we're doing that, <laughs> because one of them is Rosalinda. Is that even true? Yes. Yeah. No, not a Billy Joel song, though. No, it is a Billy Joel song. What? Look, Wait, look at his discography. There's Rosalinda and then Rosalinda's Eyes. Both of those are Billy Joel songs. Oh my God, you're right. Isn't that insane? That is insane. So here's what it should be. It should be Rosalinda, Rosalinda's Eyes. Rosalinda's P.O. Box. <laughs> Just about their pen pals now. Sure. Rosalinda's then... Extraordinary Playlist. <laughs> <laughs> Linda got a new job. She's very excited to talk about it. Have you heard from Rosalinda? <laughs> <laughs> what? What does Billy Joel have? Does he know that he has those two songs? He might have forgot. I'll bet he got halfway through the second one and was like, "Oh fuck! Well, too late." Too late. Who uh, so again, missed the trick. There just should be a fucking album full of Rosalinda's crap. <laughs> Two is wrong. Two is a wrong amount. There's got to be a... at least three. It is a rule. It, it's an absolute rule. You do one, but here's what I say. You do one or again a ten album with a bonus track. <laughs> Let's go ten tracks and then there's a bonus fucking Rolinda, Rosalinda thing. And then the bonus track, it's called Rosalind a question mark, and at the end he says her name's actually Denise. That's the song. <laughs> That's how you do an album. See, cough syrup, baby. I got all the ideas. <laughs> You're a real cough syrup is a real good record producer. <laughs> I'm sure cough syrup's made a few albums. Yeah. Oh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to. I'll ask you one thing, and then I'll ask. I'll bring up a topic that if, see if you have one, and then we'll do the song. Okay. Have you noticed how many dogs are in grocery stores? Huh. Do you notice how many more dogs are going to grocery stores these days? If you folks ever noticed, I feel like that might be more of a California thing than a New York City thing. Is it not a New York? Because, man. Are some, for sure. But there isn't much room in a New York City grocery store. Ah, okay. You can... You can't pass another cart. Like if you go into an aisle with your cart and somebody's coming towards you, you got to back out and let them come out of the aisle. The aisles are so narrow. Oh, like an old, like an old rickety um, mountain pass where you're like, ah, crap. Yeah, it's like driving in Ireland. That's great. Here's <laughs> here's how many dogs. And this is 100% true. And yes, I'm going to make this in a stand-up, but it currently isn't. Currently, we're having a human conversation. 
<laughs> but this is how many dogs there are in grocery stores. I'm in a grocery store. I see a dog and I go, oh, there's Cupcake. Meaning I recognize the dog. No, the dog from a different grocery store? From the going to the grocery store. Uh, Not from a dog park. This isn't a friend of mine. Is the dog like a cashier? <laughs> oh, there's Cupcake. And that is the dog's name. I could not in a million years tell you the lady's name. Sure. She's with a lady. Um, she doesn't come into the store by herself. That's something. But but then again, neither does the lady, so there's no telling who's in charge. Um, you Do you get dogs in bars there? You probably don't go to bars that much. Yes, you get dogs in bars here. That is more of a thing here, for sure. And And I will tell you, I love all of it. It's just I know nobody else does. Well, not nobody, but a lot of people don't like it. I like it. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it. Yeah. And then this I don't be- like it in restaurants. We went to uh, a little, there's a new Chinese place on our street, which is always exciting. Oh, Mazel. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we went there and, you know, it's brand new. They haven't even hung up the paintings and stuff. They're like, oh, this is great. We're going to get their best work. And then somebody came in with a dog, which you're like, okay, you're walking by with your dog. You got to go in and see. You can't tie up the dog outside in New York. No. Um, So they walk up to the counter with the dog. And then the guy behind the counter comes out and like starts petting the dog and playing with the dog. And then immediately goes back and retrieves our two dishes and brings them to us. (laughs) I didn't see him the whole time, but he didn't have time to wash his hands. Oh. And I'm like, look, I would definitely pet the dog. I would let the dog lick me, and then I would eat my food without thinking about it. But when a third party is handling your food, I, I didn't love it. At least make the show of clean hands. Yeah, you're right. He broke the illusion. It isn't even about the possibility of pathogens. It's more about how little do you respect me <laughs> that you didn't even <laughs> pretend yeah. even put the sink on and like check your phone for a minute do the show come on show. give me the show i worked at a uh, restaurant years ago and so did you and uh one time it was becoming really clear that the restaurant was going out of business yeah and um i didn't know it because i was young and pretty dumb about things like that but what was happening was when somebody would quit or get fired, they stopped replacing them. Yes. Yep. Attrition. Yeah. So there were three line cooks and two dishwashers. And so you had person prepared salads, person who does appetizers, and then the main entree guy. And I believe the middle guy also does desserts. I think that, oh, no, no, salad guy does desserts. Got it. Right. So that's the setup. Eventually, salad guy's gone. Uh, middle guy which is me at that point i was a line cook does you know appetizers and stuff and now i'm doing salads and desserts and sometimes main entree guy will help me out which is fine that works out uh now one dishwasher okay we got one dishwasher okay. became clear that we were going to close down one night when it was me entree guy no dishwasher uh. We were also dishwasher. Oh, no. So, which is fine if it's slow. It got, hold on. Just, no, let's see. Hold on, I'll just do this. You can still see me, right? See you. All right. Um, which is fine when uh, it's slow, but it's not slow suddenly, and we're trying to wash dishes and make entrees. And I see main entree guy spray off uh plate yep rag that's clearly not clean right off plate food on plate and i think well hopefully we don't kill anybody 
This seems unsustainable. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it's a good idea. And uh, that was, uh, you know, interesting to me that I had no idea that we were closing down. If you don't know what I'm doing, I'm looking for more glasses. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, that was just horrific. Just horrific. And it wasn't that long after that that the damn place shut down. I uh, worked at a Greek restaurant in Pasadena for a while that was poorly attended by the public. And uh, the first clue we were going, they had, you know, authentic Greek food. We had a Greek owners, this old couple that like smoked while they cooked. Um, and one of the dish was uh, authentic uh, Greek meatballs. And uh, I was in the walk-in one day and I was like looking for something. And I found a bag, a huge bag of frozen meatballs from Smart and Final. Wow. And I was like, what is <laughs> What's this? And they're like, those are the Greek meatballs. And I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, well, they're not Greek yet. <laughs> we put the spices on them and then they're Greek. And I was like, okay, that isn't great. And then we, the real sign was the very movable closing time. <laughs> like, oh, I'd start my shift there at like 5 or 5.30 or whatever. And it was supposed to close at 10. And then there started being nights where like at 9.15, they'd be like, you can go. And I was like, oh, well, that's not great. <laughs> and then there were a couple of nights where not, no one came. Wow. Not a person, but my whole shift. And we like sat in the kitchen and played cards. And I was like, what am I doing? And then it uh, was gone. Yeah. And at that point, you're just you're literally making minimum wage. Yep. Less. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're making waiter yeah. minimum wage. 15 or whatever it was. Wow. And yeah. so there's no way they have the right to ask you to l l stay busy. No no, I'm not going to look busy. Mm -mm. I'm gonna, like, oh, I'm going to unbutton, I'm gonna take off my apron. <laughs> yeah, you have no business asking me to do nothing. I got nobody here. Oh, Lord. You're not even, you're paying me less than it costs me to be here. <laughs> God, that's horrid. <laughs> that's horrid. Really yeah, restaurants, really easiest, cool. told years ago by somebody, easiest business to open Fastest business to close, somebody said years ago, and it's ever been true. Oh, man. Yeah. There was that that, was right? before COVID. Huh? That was before COVID made it impossible. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah, there are restaurants that I go to. All the restaurants I go to are successes because they're good restaurants. Right. Well, there, nothing warms your heart like seeing a restaurant that's been there for like 35, 40 years. Did you notice the switch? You did. Oh, yeah. You were looking down. I did it really quick. <laughs> yeah, out of the corner of my eye. So I got nothing. I got these. If I lose these, that's it. Then you're just blind. <laughs> I find my body. Yeah, you just tell your you know, work. You're like, sorry, I can't write jokes no more. I can't see nothing. <laughs> that's it. I could. I can type, but I don't know what it's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, Lord. So listen, you picked Rosalinda's Eyes, and uh, it's a pretty little song. It's a nice little song. Yeah. It uh, is very much, uh, I don't think he's been to Cuba. Mm -mm. So it very much feels like fiction writing. Um, although, we'll get when we get into the lyrics, I kind of feel like, it's a story about a guy who thinks it would be neat to go to Cuba. I don't think the guy in the song goes to Cuba, right? Oh, uh, bro, I got to listen to it again. Well, not right now. Yeah, it's it's I found it kind of interesting because I I thought the same thing. Well, first of all, is this Cuban inspired music? I have no idea. It's like Latin jazz infused. OK, it, you know, for the you had like some jazz guys play on this whole album, yeah. Um, so I think he was like, Let me try this, <laughs> I'll be the jazz guy now. This so, yeah. is, yeah. If you haven't heard this, and I, of course, I don't mean you, you have, otherwise, this episode makes no sense. <laughs> but if you, well, the, I haven't heard this, 
Yeah. If you, the listener, oh, by the way, I need to say this really quick. Right now, as we speak, my wife is in Harlem. Oh, yeah. Speaking of jazz. Speaking of jazz, my lovely uh, singer wife has a show on Saturday. Um, if you see this episode, I'm going to put this episode up quicker than I normally do because I just to pimp my wife's show. She has a show there. And how did that come to pass? So my wife is brilliant, of course. You've heard my wife sing. It's unbelievable. The very funny thing about my wife singing is because maybe we've talked about this is that you'll have friends who say, oh, I'm in a band and you get invited to see their band and you're just like, you're ready yourself for hell. Yeah. You're just prepared for a shitty, shitty night because your friend's band is shitty. That's just the truth. Right. And then one and they're not. When you show up and they're good, it's the greatest night in the world. Yeah, you are. You're a VIP. And you were like, I was. I was emotionally ready to hear garbage. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and you did this thing for me that was amazing. Like my nephew, um, Chris. I went to see. He was in some Irish band. Irish rock band and he was the drummer and I was ready for it to suck because I just know and he, my god it was great because uh -huh. and then it, I'm like oh he got accepted to a fancy music school oh I get it okay but my wife is like that where people are like oh my wife sings and you're like okay well, yeah, let's see this <laughs> yeah 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 my favorite thing with her it's, it's my favorite thing is a stand-up and it's my favorite thing watching her as a singer, which is seeing people who don't know her, hear her for the first time. You know, same for me. When I get on stage and I crush in front of strangers, it's the best. Yeah. It's nice to make Alex laugh. It's To me, it's better to make Dingus in the back I've never met laugh. Right. Because that guy has no investment. Yeah. Came in with no connection. Yeah, and my wife, when she's singing at some dumb bar, everybody's running their dumb mouths, and then suddenly she starts singing, and the dumb mouths go, <laughs> look, yeah. I'm getting better at puppetry. Really good. All right, so she's not singing, she's not singing, she sings. Oh, wow. Now she's whispering and saying, can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, cough syrup, everybody. Oh, I got to get on this shit. Oh, my God, you do. <laughs> oh, but anyway, yeah, she's doing a show because she got seen and somebody suggested and there's a show and it's a it's a cabaret show. It's called The Right to Cabaret. If you want to look it up, it's in New York. It's in the theater district. Great. And uh, and my wife is just incredible. It's yeah. always very amusing to me when people are like, oh, you know, can sing because everybody thinks they can sing. Sure. Yeah, I thought that for a while. I, I still think I could sing. Yeah, I still do think I can. Yeah, I mean you can. I'm wrong. I'm just wrong. It's a it's a matter of degrees. Yes. Nobody would say like, "Hey, you're not singing." Yeah, yeah. that's true. The thing <laughs> you're doing is technically singing. Yeah. I can sing like I can play tennis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's recognizable as tennis. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> uh, one time man i went and played tennis with a friend of mine uh brian resbeck and uh i did not know he had uh almost gone pro oh. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like he was making fun of me let you up? it was just very funny because he was very light on me at first and then just he just finished the game really fast and went, yeah, I used to play, so let's not do this. So like, <laughs> Jesus. It was very funny. It's oh, a good bit. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I'm, I, I, again, I, I am aware of which one is the racket and which one is the ball. That's, you know, you're underway. Yeah, that's the full. All right. So, that's the gun. Yeah. So this is a Spanish-Cuban-influenced, I guess, this, oh, I was going to say, if you've never heard this song before, man, this could not be more 70s, this song. Yeah, it's real 70s. It's got a little Blue Jean Committee to it. Yeah. Um, 
It could not come from any other era. You couldn't. Some of his songs are evergreen. And this is in the sense that it's listenable, but you know when this was made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would be able to place it on a timeline pretty easily. Yeah. Um, he does uh, a little voice. Yeah, he does. That's my favorite things. He does a little little character voice. <laughs> yeah, he does. You might not get away with. No. The piano's very sparse at the beginning. I like that. Yeah. You notice that? It starts out. Yeah, but I think he's like, let me bring in some other instruments. Yeah. Make it jazzy times. Yeah. So it's like this, the song starts up slow. There's a, a couple notes and then nothing. And then I don't, it's jazz. It's jazz. It's jazz. But it's not Diana Kroll. It's just somebody's idea of jazz. Radio, 70s radio jazz. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, this, this song is from the 70s. And there were at least three stations that would never play it for sure if they if you put a gun to their head. There's a rock station that would make fun of it in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it's just not, I don't know. It's good, though. I, I don't dislike it at all. I enjoy it. It's from... Uh, Song? Yeah. It's Steely Dan-ish. Oh, God, yeah. On the money. You're right. You're absolutely right. I've told you my friend Steely Dan joke, right? I don't know if he did. One of my favorite jokes, he goes, there's nothing better than an hour of Steely Dan, <laughs> except maybe for 10 minutes of Steely Dan. <laughs> yeah. Great joke. Uh, joke. Uh, do you want to start or should I? I feel like I should start. I think so, too. All right. I play nights in the Spanish part of town. I've got music in my hands. The work is hard to find, but that don't get me down. Rosalinda understands. Now, isn't his mother's name Linda? Yes. Is Rosalinda, right? Isn't it her name Rosalind? Or Rosalind? Rosalind. I think it's Rosalind. Oh, yeah. So, uh, a tribute of sorts. Yeah, but peculiar. It's like, um, you remember that song Frank Sinatra did, um, Something Stupid, where he sang it with his daughter? Yeah. Yeah, it's like that. I I don't, I get that that's nice, but uh, don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah, there should be a boundary. Yeah. And, very, uh, I, and with Frank, I get it because they were playing a character, but... Still... <laughs> It's not, everybody knows who that is. Yeah. And that's weird. It just is. So I will uh, a, mus a musician character. Yeah. In I wonder this one because I, I so I, I don't do this very often. I previewed the lyrics, not really on purpose, and it wasn't like I was doing work. But I just was looking at him. I'm like, this could just be a song about him for a change. Yeah, it certainly could be. It's, it's got a lot of him in it. I like yeah. the writing seems like a little like noir. Indeed. I like the phrase, I've got music in my hands, because it it's literal, literal and figurative at the same time. I mean, wow. literally, if, if you're the piano player or the trumpet player, whatever he's being. Right. On the cover, he's the trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason, yeah. Yeah, but I I do like that phrase. I play nights in the Spanish part of town. So New yeah. York, right? And I've got music in my heart. The work is hard to find. I bet that is true. I bet it was. Yeah, yeah. But that don't get me down, Rosa. Linda understands. And now we're just getting to know, I mean, we don't know her at all. This is the first mention of Rosalinda. So Rosalinda at this point could be a person or an idea. I think she's a person, but it's interesting that in the very first lyric, when we were introduced to her, we have no idea what the hell that means, right? Yeah. I yeah. kind of like that. 
Yeah, I just I assume it's it sounds like it's his girlfriend who uh, doesn't mind that he has trouble finding work. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you know, it occurs to me too that what's sort of amusing is if it's a character, it's almost like he's talking to a buddy that already knows him and Rosa Linda, so he doesn't have to give a lot of backstory. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Latin dancing solo down in Herald Square. So that's New York, right? Herald Square. Yeah, it's right around uh, 34th Street. Okay. Oh, Havana, I've been searching for you everywhere. And though I'll never be there, see, this is what I was saying. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Look at that. I know what I would see there. I can always find my Cuban skies in Rosalinda's eyes. fan effin -tastic. Really great. I like all of that. I like I like talking about a place that you'd like to go and then that you're kind of resigned to the fact that, well, I'm not going to do that. And I'll never get there, but I'm experiencing it by uh, banging this Latin girl. Which is probably the best way to experience anything. Sure. I, I don't... Opportunity. Man... Uh, yeah, you don't have to get a passport, too. You just do have sex with a nice lady. Right, there are things you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I like the phrasing, Crazy Latin Dancing Solo down in Herald Square is such a nicely constructed line. Yep. Oh, Havana. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, there's a confession here, the confession right away that... I don't really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. But I can see it. And it, well, that's a very artistic way to see the world and that we've all seen it, whether you're an artist or not. Now and then you see the, you know, like I see Ireland a particular way. I've not been there. <laughs> and I look forward to going, but, you know, and it'll be different than what I see. Yeah. But, so I've been to Ireland and it won't be that different. <laughs> That's probably true. Whatever you're thinking, you're pretty close. <laughs> well, I'm I'm hoping, and this might not be true, but there will be a place where a fella could order a beer. That's what I'm hoping. Well, buddy, you are in luck. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when she smiles, she gives everything to me. When she's all alone, she cries. I'd do anything to take away her tears because they're Rosalinda's eyes. Oh, well, something's, gone, something's gone wrong. Yeah. She or she's just that kind of girl. She's all kinds of emotional and passionate. And I think that's what he's going for. Yeah. He's very uh, Latin and has feelings. By the way, I don't know if Latin is the right if you're Cuban, is that Hispanic? No. Hispanic is Dominican or Haitian. Right. Because it's the island of Hispaniola. I guess your Latin is fine. I mean, it's the 70s, so we're lucky. I didn't get <laughs> uh, slurry. Yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I mean, it's not in the little... purposes, I'll say Latin. Yeah. Uh, I know. I, I'll agree with you. So I think he's going at right at the stereotype of uh, Latin ladies having a lot of visible feelings. Can I say something though? Absolutely about that particular stereotype. Um, I I am blessed to have a lot of Spanish folks in my life because of my job and whatever, and because of the way they're raised in their family, they're very open and uh, emotional. Yeah. I don't think they're more emotional. I think what it is, is you're aware of what they're feeling. Or demonstrative. They're demonstrative. You know, my family was demonstrative in a very specific way, which was you knew when someone was mad. Yeah. Not they anything else. That one down. They had that one down. Yep. yep. Yeah. Same here. You yeah. knew when someone was mad or uh, proud of you. Yeah, that's true. But that's about it. Anything else, shut up and put it away. Yeah, for sure. 
So, so there's something to that, you know, you are what your culture teaches you to be. True. And, and if you're not suppressed, which is kind of nice, then you get to like, you know, my friend, uh, so my, one of my friends is from Puerto Rico and I invited him to a party one time and we went to this party and I said, did you have fun? And he said, well, yeah, I did, but that wasn't a party. <laughs> uh -huh. And he said, there's nobody was dancing. There was really no, not a lot of anybody doing anything. We were just talking. And I was like, you're from Puerto Rico. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, and how, how could it be a party? It's already done. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he remembers, he has fond memories of parties that start on Friday and end around Monday. Sure. And people are just dancing and there's, and they're not like hammered. It's just right. we're, we're dancing and living and being, you know. Partying. Yeah, it's a different game. Yeah. Probably less drinking than it, at, at any one of the quiet parties you and I attended. Right, because there's other stuff to do. <laughs> where well, where the, the feature is the, the drinking. Right. You drink as much as you can handle, and then you leave. <laughs> That's it. That's a party. Yeah. I do anything to take away her tears. I really like that. That's really nice. Very romantic. And it just again feels not necessarily super Billy Joel. This is very non-judgmental and very present. Yeah. That's why I think he's like in a character of some kind. Yeah. Um, Senorita. <laughs> Don't be lonely. I will soon be there. Oh, Havana, I've been searching for you everywhere. I like that rhyme right there. Really nice. I've got a chance to make it. It's time for me to take it. I'll return before the fire dies. Love it. <laughs> Love it. There's an immediacy and a in a in a recognition, by the way. This yep. opportunity, this thing will not just stay there. You gotta yeah. go grab this. I'll return before the fire dies in Rosalinda's eyes. Man, I love the shit out of that. That's great. Really great. There's not a misstep there, is there? Senor, I mean, senorita, well, well whatever. It's, <laughs> it's just funny coming out of his mouth. But senorita, don't be lonely. I will soon be there. Oh, Havana, I've been searching for you everywhere. Nice, simple rhyme. I've got a chance to make it. It's, it's time for me to take it. And then, honest to God, this line here closes the deal on this being just about a perfect verse i'll return before the fire dies i like the rhymes are so clean make it and take it dies and eyes it yeah. just really lands nicely for for this kind like for romance you can't have like clever or half rhymes yeah you have to because you're right. Because if you do clever, then we're going to notice if it's not as clever as you thought. You better fucking nail it. Yeah. And you're not going to slam the lid. Yeah. So instead, this is just, and the longing and the, no, I mean, come on. That's just about perfect. And I like, man, I really, he's actually maybe the perfect person for this dumb character because <laughs> he's objectively somebody who doesn't belong there yeah havana scene but he's a guy who wants to he wants to belong there that's wonderful oh uh, that hurts it's so yeah <laughs> yeah so great and then it's such a drop off from those um lofty goals into all alone in a Puerto Rican band, union wages, wedding clothes, <laughs> which I love. Yeah, that's my favorite line in this song, I think. That's really good. Hardly anyone has seen how good I am, but Rosalinda says she knows. Man. Great. Oh, we have the experience of trying to be an artist. And being so frustrated that nobody notices. <laughs> um, but you have a, a woman who supports you. Yeah. 
and uh, how it doesn't really help much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know you like it. Yeah, that's what I... What a gift. What a lovely, yeah. I also you know, like, just very sorry, in the first line, uh, all alone in a Puerto Rican band is great. Just the, the idea of feeling alone in a band. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah, it's so good. And now even when I think about it, all alone in a Puerto Rican band, it's maybe even just this dumb gig he got. Not dumb, but he got this gig. This where gig. Well, we need a guy who plays this instrument. And, you know, like when you got a job in a Mexican restaurant and you're the one white guy and you're like, sure. yeah, I'm not going to be talking to anybody very much. I'm going to try. Try. I'm going to learn all the curse words and we're going to have four jokes we tell each other. <laughs> yep. I'll learn a little Spanish and be on my way. Oh, Jiminy Christmas. That's pretty great. That's Here's the other thing, too, about this is a rare song. There is not one complaint about Rosalinda. Yeah, she is all in. Super supportive. He's doing everything he can to impress her and uh, afford <laughs> a life together. He's not saying anything judgy, either. There's, yeah. not, there's not the one thing where he's like, Oh, uh, but you know, you don't have to wear those high heels all the damn time. Maybe you wear comfortable shoes or whatever he would say. <laughs> right. You need to stop crying every uh, every commercial. Yeah, why the hell are you still crying, Rosalind? No, in her in this case, he's just like, okay, you're crying. I'm gonna try to help. Right. I'm gonna go play with uh, Puerto Ricans. <laughs> union union wages and wedding clothes. It's such a great short way to describe an entire situation. Oh God, yes, yes. Putting clothes. Got it. I know what you did tonight, and yeah. I know how you feel about it. Yeah. Uh, you know how done. tired you are. When you oh. were done, you waited longer than you should to get your hundred and twenty-five dollars or whatever you got paid. Trying to find the manager with the envelope. <laughs> oh, fuck. Very uh, really good. Man, I, I've been that, you know, comedy gigs when you're done and you're looking for the dingus with your money. Yeah. I oh. love the gigs where that part is handled ahead of time. And not that they pay you ahead of time because they almost never will because they don't trust comics and they shouldn't. Fair enough. But at least it's established where you go when it's all done. <laughs> yeah. I oh. love that. I okay. love that. Casinos, if you ever work casinos as a comic, they always pay you in cash. Oh, even better. Because they think you're going to leave it all there. And they're mostly right a lot of times. A lot of times you're going to. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Oh, yeah. They'll get a percentage back. But every every casino gig, I have an angle for every casino gig where I end up with extra money. <laughs> I have the angles. You got to have the angles. How do you pull that off? Well, there's a couple. I'll tell you. Okay. Take a quick break. Want to be comedians or if you're already a comedian or this would work if you're in a band. Actually, if you were in a band and you had a casino gig, it would work even better. Wow. When you go to a, get booked at a casino, this works really well if it's the first time you've been booked there. There's ways around it if it's not. Okay. Sign up, and if you're in a band, it's better because all of you can do this. Sign up for whatever platinum membership dipshittery they have where you have to give them information and get a card. Oh, yeah. Because every single one of them is like, oh, you're a new member. Well, you get to spin the fucking wheel of dipshittery and you spin the wheel and you get a certain amount of money to play for free. But it's not real money, though. But it's real. It's money that you can use. Take that money, find yourself a slot poker machine. Okay. Slow play that, and you slowly turn that just into cash. You kill time, you get a free cocktail, and you slow play it because you're going to lose some of it. Right. Although the last time I went there, I won, and I made more money than I got paid for stand-up. Ah. Was both wonderful and a little sad. 
Okay. <laughs> but do it every time. And, huh? You could have just played poker the whole time. Yeah, exactly. I'm do that any casino gig and do not put any of your money in. Very important, I'm sure. If you lose the money, whatever, you got to play for free. But slow play it. And I did that with one time. And it'll be something dumb like you'll get anywhere between, say, 20 bucks and 700 bucks because it's just some rent. And you're probably going to get 20 bucks. Right. One time I got to 700. Huh. And I slow played that shit and I got pretty good money that weekend. It's nice. It's nice. Oh, yeah. And the shows were fine. But that was wonderful. God, amazing. Rosalind, yeah, I fucking love doing stand-up. I fucking love fucking being in my underwear by 10 and not dealing with anything. So great. Same. The The song closes out with the chorus. Crazy yeah. dancing solo down the Herald Square. They only, he only does the chorus twice. That's great. Really great. And it's a perfect chorus to end on. And though I, I'll never be there, oh, I know what I would see there. I could always find my Cuban skies and Rosalind is nice. Nice choice, my friend. That's a good song. A nice little song. Yeah. The lyrics are great. The lyrics are, this is a rare one in that I will say the lyrics are better than the song. <laughs> and they're both good, but usually it's like, oh, I really like the song. You listen to the lyrics and you're like, well, okay. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Really just pretty. It's also like no obligation to check in, <laughs> you know? He didn't do the like, oh, we, five years later we got divorced or any of that shit. Nope. Just like this is a moment where I'm feeling these feelings and I have these hopes. Let and you just get a follow up. That's it. All right, tell me your gut feeling about this because I have a, an opinion, but I want to know yours. Is this a true story or is this just a character thing? I I mean, it'll be some version of a true story where there was a lady. Sure. You can feel this way. Yeah. Um, maybe she was Latin, but I don't think it's a true story. I think, think I think they're true feelings. Yeah. Do you think maybe this is one of those true stories about a lady he's never met but saw? Very possible. That thing that we all have? Sure. Oh, I have so many stories <laughs> that are based on ladies I saw. Yeah, there's a lady, current lady, Latina, uh, who waits on me at Denny's that I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> and yeah. I'm I'm just smart enough not to bother her. That's how smart I am. I just won't do it. But that's wisdom, my friend. Yeah. So there was a French lady on my subway ride home who, you know, was as French as it gets. Every oh. single item of clothing was perfect. Um, perfect expression on her face. And oh. I was like, I'm not even going to look directly at her. But God bless. <laughs> That's... Next the story not a gross one yeah I uh there used to be this lovely lady uh French lady who used to shop at a Trader Joe's I worked at when I was young now I work at one old but this is when I was young and she was so pretty in French and it was hard to look at her yeah her I and she fucking knew it which was great which was <laughs> great so, so you think the French ones, they really know. Yeah, and she had these eyes that were just perfect, perfect, perfect. And she would come to me for recommendations and we would talk wine. And it started to be a regular thing for her to go talk to Jim. And I would be, and it'd be like an hour or two of my day of just, and I'm like, I don't think I've been good at doing my job for a while. And I don't care. Just talk to this pretty lady. And she was beautiful. She was so beautiful that she knew I knew better. Yeah. So it was perfectly safe for everybody. So I got and I'm just it was so lovely. And she was just charming, 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 charming. Yeah. 
How do they do it? I would never even, and I'm going to be just a little gross, but actually the opposite of gross. <laughs> I would never even think it was right for me to masturbate thinking about her. Yeah. I, I, don't, don't, <laughs> I don't have the right to do that. <laughs> like, if I had a fantasy life uh, sure. uh, involving her, I, I, I could picture us having dinner with her and her boyfriend. <laughs> right. It's Which very, yeah. And I get along with him great. Sure. Well, he's a hell of a guy. He's really nice. Obviously. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he, because he's the kind of guy who can date her, he knows I'm attracted to her and it doesn't bother anybody. Oh, he's a confident fellow. Yeah. Fun. Amazing. Yeah. Man, I I think about her every now and then, and it's always the softest, kindest thoughts. I never think anything other than I hope she's doing okay. <laughs> all I ever think is literally, I hope she's all right. All right, hope she's having a nice time. Oh, I listen. I am excited for today's clue. I will tell you that much. You like it doesn't um... happen very often. This popped in my head, and it was like, oh, that's a great clue. And it's either you're going to get it right away or never. And either one I'm very happy with. Rosalinda's eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's perfect. I really wish that was it. I will tell you, uh, I can't tell you this person's name, but I can tell you this is Australopithecus. That's Australopithecus. Oh, oh, okay. And uh, that just Australopithecus was what popped in my head and just seemed very funny to me. Uh, wow. Modern woman. <laughs> oh, also good. <laughs> Australopithecus. Yeah. So Australopithecus, I'll tell you a little bit about Australopithecus. Australopithecus was a tool user. They definitely used tools. Uh -huh. And Australopithecus used used something that we use, but the only version this person used was found, not created. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Australopithecus used something we use, but found, Australopithecus didn't create. Okay, so like stone tools? Well, it was a tool user, but that's a, those are dual hints that don't know something, but they found something and used uh -huh. it Used it all, and I might give you one more hand. I kind of don't want to, but I um, found something, controlled something, but found. <laughs> I found something and controlled it to use it, but found, uh, didn't oh, create. Oh, what could you possibly control, Australopithecus? Uh, crops? <laughs> Plants? No, they didn't farm. They definitely didn't farm. farm. It did some water stuff. What could you have found? Yeah, what could you find and but that you didn't create? <laughs> wow, I'm pretty stumped. It, but it's so good. <laughs> it's foundational. It is foundational to their species and ours. Uh, language. Well, they didn't have language, but we do. But I mean, even more foundational than language, I would say, for us. In fact, I would say, without it, we probably don't get to language. Oh, interesting. We we can create it. They could only use it and contain it. Okay. Oh, fire. Sure, fire. Yeah. Uh... That's what they would say. <laughs> Uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what would they say about it then? Because they can only contain it. They'd say, uh, we didn't start the fire. That's right. That's what they would say. <laughs> oh. How stupid is that? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my God. It's really great. Right? Yes. Oh. That, my friend, is a cough syrup glue. That is, uh, that's what, top five. Top five all-time clue. I love that clue because it, it turned out to be true. 
I think we've talked about this. I'm a big evolution biology nerd. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, in fact, you know what? It makes more sense to do this then. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> biology nerd right there. <laughs> All right, Attenborough. <laughs> it just amused me to no end. I was like, what? Australopithecus? Yeah, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very important hint to know it's Australopithecus. It helps out because it because otherwise it just looks like a monkey. Yeah, it's real I close. Think, I can think you can see in the eyes that it's, but I don't know because chimpanzees eyes are are disturbingly intelligent too. So it's hard. The eyes is not necessarily a giveaway. Very expressive. Although mm. I kind of now want the answer to be Rosalinda's eyes. That's really funny. <laughs> it was just a very funny yeah, guess. That could be her name. Yeah, yeah, you know, all the famous primates, there's Lucy, Rosalinda. Right. That's why I was trying to think of something with Lucy. I was like, is there a Lucy song I forgot about? Uh, Lucy, ah. yeah, Lucy, if you've ever seen, have you seen pictures of Lucy, like, sort of recreated? Sure. She's so tiny. Yeah, she, she's real tiny. She's not even, I like, she's not even... I mean, she's somewhere in the in the mix, but she's not even one of our. I don't even think she's. I think she's on a a dead end branch as far as like she's interesting, but um, yeah, Lucy yeah. can do tools and stuff. Do you know what killed Lucy? Probably. No, what's that? A toothache. Wow. They figured out years later because Lucy was found in a riverbed, and uh, well, they were like, "How did she get here?" And they speculation that she drowned herself Ooh. and because it's very common even amongst us homo sapiens to die of teeth for a long time yes. isn't that great <laughs> kind of great <laughs> it's just very uh, funny how bad nature treats us for the most part you're poorly designed indeed uh, i'm listening to uh bill bryson's book the body Okay, nice. Great audiobook, uh, which he reads very nicely. Um, and it's, yeah, it's alarming. It's like, oh, there's all kinds of like dead ends and mistakes and poor design moves. Yep. Here's a great one. Here's a great one I'll share with you. There's a lot of animals that in their DNA are able to produce their own vitamin C. Yes. We and are not among them. We have it in our dna right it's broken yeah there's an enzyme we don't have yep but we used to but we used to so now we have to eat oranges yeah like an idiot <laughs> you gotta eat an orange like a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> oh all right, so I'm going to give you a choice as far as the songs I'll choose. One of them is a potential bottle episode, but it's still a Billy Joel song. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you that idea first. So I have this idea that we could do, we didn't start the fire, only if we commit to intentionally interpreting the lyrics the worst. <laughs> just wildly misunderstanding the point of the song that might be fun because otherwise it's almost not worth talking about true because the song is just a list right but if we tried to read it as though it were not a list exactly sort of hieroglyphic code right. and no pre-plan like well let's go with that let's just <laughs> that's <laughs> Seems funny to me. Yeah, and now we remember he drank cough syrup. That's right. Don't forget. And the other one is, I was like, did we already talk about Rosalinda? I don't think so. Because we could, uh, the other option we have is to wipe out all the Rosalinda themed songs. <laughs> Wait, is Rosalinda a hooker in that song? Let me see. Or am I thinking of a different one? Or are you thinking of a hooker? Uh, let me see. Well, this is the one where he wants to know, oh, Rosalinda, why you cry? 
Oh, Rosalinda, could this be why? Rosalinda? Yeah. It's, is it's, it's from Piano Man Legacy Edition, so I wonder if this was a never released. I feel like it might be a never released. Hold on. I mean, oh, Rosalinda, why are you cry? Why are you cry? <laughs> Don't why cry. Don't cry, Rosalinda. Come on. Come on, what's the matter with you, Rosalinda? It's very hard to even find the lyrics because it keeps giving me eyes. Yeah, you got to do uh, BillyJoel.com for this baby. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know this song. Yeah. So I'm giving you a choice because I'm all jacked up on uh, <laughs> so I can't make good decisions right now. I'm going to go with Rosalinda because I don't think I have the energy for uh, the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that's a good choice. I think a little too crazy. No, I think that's fair. I respect. Yeah, yeah. put the professor away. <laughs> oh, now I'm the dapper gentleman. Oh, hey, daps. <laughs> uh, I'm. You know what? I will say that I cough, sir. For sure, I'm going to degrade the trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the uh, who sang backup on uh, uh, now I forgot what song <laughs> I did. I drink cough syrup, maybe it was you actually. Uh, my life. Whoa, who sang the famous person from a different band? Famous person from a different band. Actually, he did back up on three different tracks on the same album. Uh, Glenn Fry. No, but real close in a lot of ways. I'm thinking it is close. I was, you know, you want to guess the Beatle because you'd wish that for him, but no. Um, and wow. Uh, dude, right? Dude, yeah. Okay, well, you know, it's got to be a dude. So Glenn Fry is actually a decent guess as far as guesses go. Um, right flavor of guy. Yeah. Um, not, <laughs> this is the cough syrup talking, but not Bill Gates, but the bread guy. Oh, man. What is that guy's name? Not the bread guy, but I would say you're even closer in a lot of ways. Wow in the right range yeah i feel like it's from one of those fucking bands yeah yeah um rosalinda this is rosalinda <laughs> peter satara peter satara i really was in the ballpark really were right there as far as just guessing goes that's pretty damn good pretty damn good yeah, and you know what's funny is the reason I could get even close is because I can pick that. Of course, I know that song. I know that song up and down. Yeah. That song is, uh, uh, yeah, that was episode one of this show. <laughs> That's right. Wow. That's the reason we're doing this. Damn. If you had an, another reason to love that song even more, that's yeah. why the show exists. All right. So we're not doing Rosalinda's Eyes. We're doing rosalinda and then after that the rose <laughs> the rose yeah <laughs> and then row row your boat yep yep row 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 and then just a song about pirates yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i gotta say by the way your monologue lately has just been great i'm just really enjoying it oh thanks for having uh fun yeah he did a Oops. he did a dumb impression again the other day where i was like he was doing he was doing Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. And it was like huh? For way too long. Yeah, and just let him know that is also his Joe Biden. I think he, I was gonna bring it up in the meeting and I was like, I don't want to bum him out. I'll just let him go. 
But yeah, it is his Joe Biden. I like that. Think of another old, think of another guy that he should do that's just that fucking impression. <laughs> Uh, well, tonight uh, we forced him to do um, fucking Matt Saracen from Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> I will. God, that is great. <laughs> <laughs>